Hello, my name is Katarina Haesh and this is the course for design and testing of software. This is the module of behavior driven development, also known as BDD. Let's start by first making a brief introduction to some of the people that are involved in this approach. So let's start with Dan North. He has been a coach, coder, and consultor for over 25 years. He is the originator and has coined the term behavior-driven development in 2006. And since then, he's been applying system thinking and simple technology to solve complex business problems. Then we have Rachel Davis, that is an author, besides being a coach, a team lead, and software engineer. She has been applying extreme programming since 2000 and is the author of BDD in a nutshell that serves as the basis for this presentation. Finally, we have Matt Wine as the CEO and co-founder at Cucumber and also the author of the Cucumber book as the tooling to enable Gherkin and BDD, both for testers and developers. What is BDD? BDD stands for Behavior Plus Driven Plus Development, or it can also be read the other way around. So implementation or development led by or driven the behavior of the software to be developed. The idea is to build a shared understanding on what software to build by working through examples, as stated by Rachel Davies. This small example, this, this small figure, presents us with a scenario where you have a product owner, a business analyst, a quality assurance team member, and a software engineer. And all the team is joined and is collaborating to define examples of the product that is going to be developed. So everyone makes questions and may produce statements, starting with what if, and I want something, and what if that happens. And all of this discussion provides with a couple of examples that are synonymous of the features that will be available in the software. BDD focuses mainly on collaborating with business people, as Dan North put it. So it basically is like TDD, but more. Examples are turned into automated tests. This is quite important because TDD promotes automation of tests and BDD continues that work. Acceptance tests are elaborated for each user story and automated as the software is built. So, following the approach of TDD, first we build the BDD test, the acceptance test, and then we complete the test accordingly to the software that gets developed and the specific feature that gets developed. BDD is more than TDD because talking about behaviors engages the whole team. As we've seen in the image that was presented before, everyone with a specific role in the team collaborates and produces examples to promote the behavior-driven development. In order for this collaboration to actually occur, there's a promotion to use an ubiquitous language. The idea is to describe the behavior in non-technical language so that everyone involved can actually understand the examples being written and discussed. The idea is to use names that reflect the ubiquitous language used by business people and to build the shared understanding. You're building BDD wrong if the only people who read the examples are the developers. So basically, this is a team effort and everyone should read the examples, discuss and design and create the examples. What are the inspirations of BDD? First, extreme programming and all the background that is available. Uh, since uh, the appearance of extreme programming, there's a way to involve all perspectives, both business analyst and quality assurance, in conversations about what to build, what is expected of the software product. Ward Cunningham, inventor of Wiki, developed FIT, a testing framework in 2003 that enabled business people to specify tests in tables using spreadsheets. And... 
we have come to an age where a tooling support is rather good and rather usable. So we have examples like JBehave produced by Liz Q and later Q Cucumber that is promoted by, for instance, Matthew Y. What BDD is not? It is not an agile framework nor a project management approach. BDD is in fact about discovering what to build with two teams that use Scrum or Kanban. If they want to use BDD, they have to figure what they put on their backlogs and boards. Another interesting approach is to find out what are the metrics to be used when using BDD. Since we stop using other metrics, the number of BDD scenarios delivered could be an interesting replacement for the velocity of user stories, for instance. Where to start? Let's start by looking at the structure of a story. So we start with a title and then a narrative or description that could take a form of a rather common standard approach to define a user story. As we can see here, has a role I want to feature so that I can benefit. And this explains and details a user story. And then we start with the acceptance criteria that is presented as scenarios. So we number the scenarios, scenario one, scenario two, each scenario has a title, and then it's composed by several steps that promote the background or context to establish a test or usage, displays uh, an event or an action produced by a user or some type of external system. And then we have the confirmation and validation stage of the testing. So basically, this is a structure of a story that is also the structure of a feature. And as we will see, the structure of a feature file written in Gherkin and used by Cucumber to produce the automation required. Keeping up with the example of a story, we have the story title account holder withdraws cash. Then we have the description in the format of user story for the story. As an account holder, I want to withdraw cash from an ATM so that I can get money when the bank is closed. And then we start with the scenarios of usage of that story. So for instance, for scenario one, we have the scenario where the account has sufficient funds. And the description of this scenario is quite simple. Let's look at it. Given the account balance is $100 and the card is valid and the machine contains enough money, when the account holder requests $20, then the ATM should dispense $20 and the account balance should be $80 and the card should be returned. As we go along to the scenario descriptions and even the creation of these scenarios, it's quite easy to uncover other scenarios. Let's look at another example. In this scenario, in scenario number two, the account has insufficient funds. So there isn't enough money to make the withdrawal. Let's look at the approach and the step description. Given the account balance is $10 and the card is valid and the machine contains enough money, when the account holder requests $20, then the ATM should not dispense any money. And the ATM should say there are insufficient funds. And the account balance should still be $10 and the card should be returned. Scenario number three is the case where card has been disabled. So given the card is disabled, when the account holder requests $20, then the ATM should retain the card and should say that the card has been retained. Scenario number four, the ATM has insufficient funds. And we can go over all the distinct scenarios of a simple story and all the ways that this product can be used by users. <music>